Okay then gang, so now we need to make the templates for the register and login pages. And in both cases, we need a web form. So rather than me write these out from scratch during the video, I've made templates up here inside this folder. And this folder, by the way, came along with the starter project for this course. So if you downloaded that, then you should see it up here in your editor. Anyway, inside that folder, we've got a couple of files, one called login form and one called register form. So if we take a look at the login form first, we can see that it's just a very simple HTML form with a couple of inputs, one for an email and one for the password. And importantly, we've attached the name attribute to each one right here because Laravel uses that name attribute when the form gets submitted to reference these input values on the back end. So the first one is called email and the second one is called password, simple enough. And these are the only two fields we need in this form for a user to log in, right? We've also got the at CSRF directive in the form to prevent cross-site request forgery. So let's grab this form template right here. We're going to copy it and then you want to head to the login view and we can just paste it right here within the layout component. There is just one thing I want to add to this form for now, and that is a value attribute on this email field. So let's do that first of all. And I want to set this value to be something dynamic, so curly braces, and inside that, we're going to use the old function and pass in email as an argument. So what this does is make sure the value of the email field is retained when a user submits the form and we get some kind of validation error. If this wasn't here, then whenever the form gets submitted and there's some kind of error feedback like incorrect credentials, then we would lose the submitted email value inside that input field and the user would have to type it out again. Anyway, that is the login form pretty much done now. Now we can head to the register form. So inside here, it's not much different at the minute. We have a different H2 inside the form, but we also have this at CSRF directive. And also we've got an input for the email and an input for the password. Now we are going to make a few more changes to this, but let's copy it for now. Grab all this form and go to the register page. And then I'm going to get rid of this H2 and paste it in. In fact, before we edit this properly, let me go over to the login page and I need to get rid of this login right here because we have another H2 inside the form. So let me get rid of that. And also I'm just going to scoot these in. All right, that's the login one done. Let's go back to the register one. So again, we have an input for the email and one for the password. I'm also going to use that old value right here, the old function rather on the value attribute. So let's add that in just so we can retain the user's input when the form comes back with some kind of error. So the value is name. And then what I'd like to do is actually add in a couple more input fields. So when we're registering for a new account, if we actually take a look at the user model that comes along for the ride with new uh, Laravel projects, then you can see we also have a name field, right? So I'm gonna add a field for the name inside this form. To do that, I'm gonna copy all this, the email one, and I'll paste it just above. Then I'll change this to name. The type is going to be text. The name attribute is just going to be name. And oops, this needs to be email right here, not name. And this needs to be name. Awesome. So now we need one more field and that is for a password confirmation. So I'm going to copy this one and paste it down here. And then this is going to be for password underscore confirmation and we'll say confirm password for the text and then for the name this is very important it must be called password confirmation now I'm going to explain why this is so important later on it's to do with when we're using Laravel to validate the input fields and compare the passwords but it must be called password confirmation and again we'll come back to that in a future video maybe even the next one we'll see all right, so I think that is pretty much it. And by the way, we don't use the old function for the value on the password fields because typically if you submit a form and something is incorrect, then the password doesn't stick around. We have to enter that in again. So instead, we just use the old function for the value of the name field, which we need to change up here if we can, like so, and also the email one, okay? All right, so I think that is pretty much it. Let me just double check the login one again. Yep, looking good. Okay, so now we've made the two forms and next we need to hook them up to a couple of route handlers for when they get submitted. 
So inside the web routes file, we want to copy the two current authentication routes and paste them in again down here so we can just edit them. Now the paths on both of these new routes are going to be the same and that's okay because we're going to change the request type from get to post on both of them because when we submit the forms, we're going to be sending post requests to these route paths. Okay, so next up we need to change the control actions for each one as well. Now the register one is going to be called register and the login one is going to be called login. Now we've not made those actions yet, but we will do shortly. And finally, we need to update the names of these new routes. And all we're going to do is remove the show from before each one. So now we should have one called register and one called login. Again, this distinguishes the post route handlers from the get route handlers, which show the web pages. Now you don't have to name them at all this way, but for the sake of this tutorial, to make it really clear what each route is for, I've chosen to do it this way. Anyway, now we can point the forms to these routes and then also make the control actions for them as well. So then let's head to the register form first of all, and the action is gonna be something dynamic. We're gonna use the route function and inside here, pass the name of the route, which is just register. Okay, remember, that's what we can uh, call it right here, register. So that's that one done. In fact, we need to also say post here for the method because we're sending a post request. Let's go to the login one. The action is gonna be double curly braces, then the route function. And inside here, we will pass login. That was the name of the login route. Again, the method is post, awesome. So now when we submit these, they're sending post requests to these two new routes that we have right here. Now we need to create these functions, register and login inside the auth controller. So I'm actually just going to copy those for now and I'm gonna paste them down here. We'll change this one to register and also we'll remove this return right here. We're not gonna return a view anymore. We'll change this one to login and we'll get rid of this as well, awesome. Okay, so now we've made the two forms for the two different pages. We've hooked those up to a couple of new routes for when those forms get submitted. And then in turn, those routes are hooked up to a couple of new controller actions, which we still need to flesh out. So we'll start that process in the next lesson. But for now, I just wanna have a quick look at these pages in the browser. So let's go to the login page first of all. Yeah, looks good. We have one for email and one for password and a button down here. When we go to the register page, name, email, password, and confirm password. Awesome, all looking pretty good. 